Okay, in this video, I'm going to pick up where I left off on my previous video. And where that was, was that uh, I seemed to be having something that wasn't working properly uh, when I uh, ran the processing sketch. So it uh, didn't take me long to uh, see what the problem was with that. Let me, so let me talk about it because it's something that's fundamental to doing any kind of coding. And what that is, is that when you write a script, a computer code, um, all of your syntax has to be exactly right in that if you misspell a word or miss a symbol or punctuation, you, you will get an error or it simply won't work properly. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now let's see uh, what was going on with that. Uh, here's the script I had last time. And when I ran it, I got a relatively small work area here. Now the size of that work area is supposed to be determined by this command right here in uh, in processing. And I set the size command inside the void setup block. Now let me just explain what I mean by a block. A block of text is usually bounded by these curly brackets here and here. And so void setup is, uh, is basically like a subroutine in uh, processing. And everything in between these curly brackets is part of that set up block of code. And notice we have the same thing down here, void draw. We have this curly bracket here, right here. And the pair is this curly bracket down here. And you see because as I click next to that, I get an indicator around that curly bracket right there. Here are some other blocks of code that appear. There's this and this is the closed curly bracket. And there's this, and this is the closed curly bracket. So what we have going on here with these blocks of code is that we have an if statement. If whatever appears in this if statement is true, then this block of code between this curly bracket and this curly bracket is executed. If whatever is in here is false, then it goes to else and this block of code is executed. So mouse pressed checks to see if I pressed a button on my mouse. If I have pressed a button, then I have this blocks of code is executed and it says fill zero. Fill is the command that fills the shape that I'm drawing with uh, a brightness and zero is black and 255 is white so the fill values go from zero to 255 so that's 256 values which means that that's two to the eighth is 256 so we use an 8-bit uh, variable to determine the gray level of what goes inside the, uh, the item here that we're drawing. What we're drawing is this ellipse. Okay, now, ellipse, the first two coordinates here are mouse X and mouse Y. Those are the X and Y coordinates of the cursor inside the work area. And the ellipse has a X uh, diameter of 80 and a Y diameter of 80. So the ellipse is actually a circle centered at mouse X and mouse Y. And then depending on whether the mouse is pressed or not, the circle is either filled with zero black or 255 white. And now let's go back up here. The error is that I didn't spell setup properly. 
And a clue on that is that this command, which is a legitimate command in processing, this command is in um, uh, bold uh, blue. This is just in normal black and white. So it's not recognizing this as a setup command. Now I need to put in a U there. Now all of a sudden this becomes a setup command. So now it should execute properly. So let's see. I hit this and indeed here is my my size of my sketch area. Uh, it's drawing the circle. The center of the circle is at m the mouse position and if I press the, the button on the, on the mouse it goes black and if I release it's white, black, white and so on. Okay so that's pretty interesting. Now let's do a little experiment. I talked about doing experiments. Let's set this to 480. So there we go. Now I'll execute run and notice I have a 480 by 480 sketch uh, display area right in here. Okay so that is uh, uh, that's an example here um, for uh, for you to try yourself please. Okay, let's look at another example. Let me just clean this out. Uh, so we've seen what size does. We've seen that we change these numbers to change to the size of the work area. Uh, we've seen a little bit what happens in here with if and if else and colors and mouse press and mouse X and mouse Y. Okay, now, so I'm going to close this here. No, let me, in case I want to come back and use it, let me just pull it aside. There we go. Okay, so we've done size. Now, let's do another one here, new. There we go. Here's a new sketch area. Okay, let me begin by setting the size, size uh, 480, comma 120. Notice I'm not using the void setup now, semicolon. If I don't put a semicolon, it won't work. Now I'm going to type point 240 by 60 so point um, the uh, the guess would be that this is just going to plot a single point centered at this location inside the uh, box defined by this size now remember the X position uh, is the distance from the left side of the box and the Y position is the distance from the top down into the box. So we can do this right here. Okay, so if you can look very carefully right here, it's almost invisible. You might see a single point plotted right there. Wow. Okay, um, so that's how we plot a single point. So that's enough of that. Let me just close this. Now let's um, let's do another one. Let's do line. Okay, now I'm going to open up a new box. New. Now. Type size again, S I Z E. Open close, and then I'm going to do 480. 480 by 120. 
Now I'm going to draw a line, put a semicolon, line 20, comma 50, 420, comma 110. Okay, so another semicolon there. Now, as you might imagine, we set the size of the box and then the line draws a line between a point here located at x equals 20, y equals 50 and a point here at x equals 420, y equals 110. So let's see what happens with that. Okay, so here we go. We're going from here to here. Okay, and this looks like it's uh, the right coordinates to me. So there we've drawn a point, we've drawn a line. Let's uh, let's try something else here. How about a rectangle? We'll keep size at 480 by 120, and then right in here, I'm going to replace this with this function, rect rectangle function. And to draw a rectangle, I define the two coordinates on the opposite ends of a diagonal, and then those two points will define the rectangle. So 180, 60, and 220, 40 will be our points at the opposite ends of the rectangle. And then let's run the program. And here we have, so 180 by 60. Now, um, so that looks like it would be this point right here, which is halfway down, because the total Y distance is 120. So it's 180 from the left, down 120 is that point. And then we have this point over here, which is 220 from the left, okay, and 40 down. And um, um, yes, it's uh, not doing exactly here what I'm thinking that it should be doing. So let's do an experiment. If we see something that we're not uh, absolutely sure about, let's do an experiment. Let's go from 40 to 50 and see what happens. Now I'll run again. Okay, it gets a little bit bigger. So looking like this right here, okay, is going down 50. Let's go 60 and run it. So 60 goes all the way to the bottom here. And uh, so we have size 480 um, by 120. Okay, so I'm still a little confused here. Let's go, let's do zero here. Let's see what happens. Okay, zero is giving me a line. Oh, so zero is this y coordinate. Well, that's unexpected here. Let's try a negative number. Let's do negative 10. So it looks like it's negative 10. Let me do no, something bigger than that. Let's go negative 40. So 220, negative 40. And this whole thing is coming up here. Okay, so here's the 60 right here, 180, 60. And then this is coming up, negative 40, because it looks like it's 20 from the top. Okay, so this here uh, right now looks like it's uh, giving me uh, a width. Now, let me just try this. Let me try 60. 
Let me try negative 60 and see what I get. There we go. So 220 goes here. So okay. So look look what's happening here. This isn't the coordinate. These isn't the coordinate of this point. Okay, this is telling me 180 and 60, which is this point, and this is telling me the width of this. So it's 220 across, and then negative 60 brings me in the negative y direction. And if I change that to a positive number, it brings me down here to the in the positive y direction. There. So you see that. Okay, so there's an example of how we figured out how a particular function works by doing an experiment with changing values, which is something that I recommend highly uh, when you're trying to figure out how something works in any computer language. You can do experiments with, uh, with the commands in the language. Okay, now with that, Let's go to the next example. I'm going to leave size 480 by 120. Notice, by the way, that size does not have to be in the void setup block of code. OK, so now I'm going to put uh, two commands, three commands in here with the new commands we haven't seen before. I'm going to put quad Q. Uh, Q U A A D quad one fifty eight comma fifty five comma one ninety nine comma fourteen comma three ninety two comma sixty six. Now I need to do a little bit more here. Uh, comma uh, 351 comma 107 close paren and semicolon let me make this a little bit bigger there we go so here's quad now I'm going to use a triangle D R I A N G L E triangle three forty seven comma fifty four three ninety two comma nine comma three ninety two comma sixty six close paren semicolon and then I'll do another triangle and I'm just gonna let me try just copying and pasting this and changing the numbers copy paste okay 158 158 55 290 91 and then 290 112 and then I already have my close paren and semicolon now let's try running this so here's what I have the quad these here specify the corners of the quad. 158.55 is our first corner. So that looks like it might be 158 and then 55 down. Second corner is 199 and 14. Well, maybe then, okay, maybe this right here is 158.55. And this is 199.14. 
Then we have 392.66, which could be this point right here. And then we have 351.107, which looks like it's that point. So that looks like the four points here. And now we're graphing a triangle. When to, to graph the triangle, we have to give it the four vertices of the triangle, or the points. Uh, 347, 392, 392 are the x-coordinates. So these look like the two 392 x-coordinates. This is 392.9. This is 392.66. And by default, that makes this one 347.54. So you see how that's working. So here we're drawing um, an arbitrary shape, which is a quad together with two triangles right in there. Okay, so now we've got that. So let's try something else. Let me close this. And um, let's stick with size 481.20. Now I'm going to draw a bunch of uh, ellipses, actually circles. Let me just delete this. Okay, now I'll type e e ellipse 278, comma, negative 100, 400, 400. semicolon. So this gives me the center of the circle. This is the x and y diameters of the circle. Now let me copy that and then paste here. Okay, and let me just delete all of this right in there. Okay, now I'm going to fill in 120, comma 100, comma 110 comma 110. There, there, I don't need that. I already got close print. Now, the uh, third ellipse. Let me take these out. This is going to be a small one. It's going to be centered at x equals 412, 60, and then 18, comma 18, are the two diameters. Okay, so this should give us three ellipses inside of this box. Let's see. So here we have. Notice that the uh, center of the first circle is outside the box because the upper limit here is at y equals zero. So the center is up here somewhere. It's outside the box. Right there, negative 100. But the part of the circle that's inside the box does get graphed. Similarly with this circle, part of the circle is outside the box, but all of the smaller circles inside the box. So that's that example. Okay, now um, I have, uh, I want to do arc is the next command I want to do. So we're going to do two different arcs. Maybe I'm going to save doing arc uh, for the next uh, video. Sounds like a plan to me. So here we go. Next time.